Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today I thought we'd do a fun little project, a little sort of painting with clay project where we create all these nice blends and colours on what is a flat piece. This one's painting with polymer clay, a flower pendant, and it's a very simple technique that I'm going to show you in how I do my painting with polymer clay. This is a step-by-step -step video, but I will of course fast forward through certain bits even if you don't want to do this one yourself, it's quite fun just to sit back, relax, and see how it all comes about and is created. When I first started doing the technique which I describe as painting in polymer clay, it came from a um, background of Pietro Dura work, which I was introduced to by Suhiza, which is inlaying pieces um, of coloured clay. But I soon discovered that I actually wanted to add more details. So this was one of the first pieces I did, which is a box. And you can see particularly with things like the butterflies, this is where I first started doing all these little strips of clay and started adding them in and manipulating them to get the images. And I'll say this was a box completely made of clay which opens out. And very quickly I moved on from that, particularly if you see that image, into doing a few bits and pieces on jewellery. So for instance that's an orchid pendant. All of these are completely flat, they've all been sanded and polished and are lovely and smooth. And I then took that further on and did covering a couple of eggs. And you can see I've actually got a, a video showing you a time lapse of how I created this one. It's called The Making of Spring. Then moved on to doing more birds because I seem to love doing birds. Here's some kingfishers. Again on an egg and again very smooth. Although this one has a slight texture because the trouble with doing them smooth is that you do sand off some of the additional work. The other problem with doing it on an egg, of course you get a slight um, distortion of the image as you put it around the curved surface. So I then thought, okay, then let's make some straightforward pictures. So I started doing officially what I call paintings in clay. So again, these are all completely clay. You can see here exactly the same way as we've done um, what we're going to do today, how I've built them up, just creating the images. And again, see how I started with a background. And just slowly, slowly building up. And this was the last one that I've done. You can see there how it is on the back. So it's from doing these that people said, please, please, can we do a tutorial? So I wanted to do something which I knew would be achievable and attainable. And just to give you a start on how I do my techniques. Whenever I'm working or painting um, in oils and also to a certain extent in clay, my preference would be to work from life. But of course, it's not always practical, particularly with things like flowers, because they go over quite quickly. They move according to the sun. And also with something which takes sort of several hours to do, which this one does, then it's not really helpful. However, I do always like, if I can, to work from something that I know so that I've seen all the details. For instance, I can see exactly how the stamen works, how the answers are, how many bits and pieces there are, how it all fits together, how the petals all overlap each one. All of those little details make such a difference when you're actually doing something like this painting. So, although I can't work from this, I have used this for reference in knowing exactly how the flower fits together, and I have taken a photo of the um, hibiscus and this is what we'll be working from. So whatever you use, try and make sure it's something that you know. If you're using a photo, obviously please make sure if it's not your own photo, it is copyright free and you're not infringing anyone's um, rights or benefits by using it. But other than that, just find something that you fancy having a go at. You don't have to do one of these, but I'll show you the technique and how we're going to do our project today. There's not much equipment we need for today's session. A couple of things which we don't, won't use much of, but just to have to hand. So I've got my polymer clay blade and my craft knife. But the main tools we're going to use for the whole thing are these little wooden sticks. I mean, we call them cocktail sticks in the UK because they just the things you add the fruit into to go your cocktails. Um, but just something with a really sharp point. And I like to use these, A, because they're sharp, B, they pick up the clay nicely and they're easy to manipulate, but they're also very cheap. Um, I'm also going to use a ball tool. So it's one with quite a small, probably about a couple of millimetre piece on that end, and probably about a one millimetre piece on that end. But again, whatever you've got to hand, and if you haven't got that, then you could always use something like the blunt-ended cable needle, something, just something that's going to help smooth out so something with a, a blunt end not a sharp end and most of what I do as you'll see will be done using that 
It's also handy occasionally just to have a little roller. A um, couple of reasons for this one, we're going to roll some card around it, but also just to roll flat right at the beginning and not after that point, but again, not essential. I've got a couple of sheets here, just sort of about four inch squares, something like that. And this is the, the baking parchment, but wax paper, um, greaseproof paper, tracing paper, anything that the clay isn't going to stick to works really well. And I've got a couple of squares here because I'm going to lay some of each of all my colours out on there just to make it easy to work with as I go along. And image, you'll need an image to work from unless you're just going to do freehand, which in which case, brilliant, do that. So I took a photo, I then did a little bit of photoshopping trying to get the highlights and the shadows to be as strong as I possibly could. It's still not great and working from real life would be much better. So what we're going to do is going to work from this basic um, image shape but we're really going to accentuate the shadows, accentuate the lights and we're going to go, not going to keep it all quite so red, we're going to go quite pinky just to give us more of a chance to create an image as we go. So that's what I'm going to be working on um, when I'm actually looking at the detail but in order to do our shape I've just shrunk a version down to the size I want and this is going to be the size of the finished piece and this will be the pendant that we do. So that's the image I'm going to use for my template. So I've got tracing paper, the right size and with your pencil you can just sort of trace round then cut out your shape so you end up with a cut out roughly the shape and so it doesn't have to be exact just roughly and put that to one side. I also want another piece of nice pristine um, paper, this again is wax paper, um, it's going to be big enough to put our whole piece on that we're working on. So this is the bit we're effectively going to be working on um, and we're just using the tracing paper as a template. When I've got all my colours going I'm going to put them all just on a laminated sheet of paper and this is just the general normal measuring sheet. I'm not going to use this at all but for anyone who does want the reference it's www.printablepaper.net but to be honest anything that's laminated. Um, I like to use the blank side so I can clearly and easily see where all the colours are and that will make sense in a minute when I do that. And then we come on to extruders. Now unlike most artists that I've seen doing polymer clay paintings, I use an extruder to get all my colours down to a nice manageable size. I then use the extruded strips of clay and break those down and make them even smaller in order to create and build up my picture. So extruders, I'd always had a Makin's clay extruder um, which was very good um, and I'd use them a lot and these are the dies I'd used with them say dies or discs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and the ones we're going to use today is the smallest aperture you can get. Now that's the single hole, but in the making set it does actually come with the multiple holes. So that's the one I'm going to be using because it's easier to extrude things with multiple holes than it is just one. And that's probably about, I don't know, sort of one and a half, two millimeters. So as small a hole as you can get it. You definitely want to get an extruder that's got a, a twisty type handle on it, um, not a plunge one used for cake decorating or icing craft because that won't be strong enough to um, push the clay through. There are other makes of extruders, all of whom are very very good, but I'm only showing you the ones I've personally used um, because they're the ones I can attest to. I'm a very lucky girl, I have now got one of these which is a Lucy Clay check extruder and I'll put the links to both of those extruders um, below this video and this is the one that has made all the difference to me doing this painting work because I can now extrude as many colours as I like and it's so easy to do. It's got a ooh, it's got a really nice big strong sturdy handle which you turn and as with all the extruders you simply take off the end here, pop your die in, pull the handle back so that whatever's in the inside pulls down and then pop your clay in, re-screw and then turn the handle and the clay extrudes out at the end. To bake your piece you'll need a tile to bake on and some aluminium foil and I always tent my piece in this just to prevent the clay from getting damaged should your oven spike. I will of course be using wet wipes and tissues to wipe my hands and tools as I go along and to condition the clay then a pasta machine is very handy and also to do the flat sheets or if you don't have one then condition your clay by hand and roll the sheets flat with the roller. If you're making a pendant like me then a little bit of liquid clay is handy. I've just decanted some into a little jar here. If you haven't got any liquid clay then PVA glue would work just as well for what we're doing, just a dab of it today. And I'm just using just a very simple piece of boona cord just to thread through a hole in the back um, to make it into a pendant when we're finished. I'm using Fimo Soft for today's session. 
Now, I've only ever used Fimo Soft when I've done my polymer clay painting. I'm assuming the other brands would work, but I would imagine the softer the clay, the better it will work. And so certainly, if you're going to have a go at the other clays, use the softest clay you have got to hand. Now, I'm mixing actually fairly biggish portions of the clay here simply because this is a demo and it gives you an idea of how much comes out um, when you extrude these amounts but to be honest for what we're doing today you could actually get away with just doing a quarter of these amounts this is much much more than we will need just for doing the one project but I suppose I've got into the habit of doing it because I like to extrude lots of colours and because they will last for quite a while. So you can keep these going and they'll be several months worth before you need to sort of push them back and re-extrude them again. In total I've used six colours, white, cherry red, plum, black and then I've got just two little bits of yellow, so the lemon yellow and the sunflower yellow and they just make the, um, the anthers, the bit in the centre right at the end. So I'm going to take those off to one side just for a second. When I'm doing my flowers or my designs, I like to choose generally a start colour. So this is the cherry red. And then I will make shades. So I'll go several shades lighter and several shades darker. Now I'd like to go at least three or four shades in either direction just to give you that really nice blending effect that you can then get. But on this one I've obviously done that one and then five lighter and actually six darker. And these light um, extra dark shades we're not going to use in the petals, these will be the centre of the flower. Proportion wise, depending on the brand of clay you're going to use, this the, this may change. The white in the Fimo Soft is very um, mild, a very weak colour if you like, and the pigments in this cherry red in particular are very strong. So just to explain the amounts I've done, this is half a pack of an ordinary Fimo Soft. And because you've cut the lines, all I've done is I've cut straight down the lines, just do one there, and then each line I've just cut in half. So each one of these is about three and a half grams or about an eighth of an ounce of polymer clay and I'm going to then work on these so you can see that is two of those. So to go through the colours I'm working on, I started with just two of those sizes of red, then one of the red, one of the white, one and a half of the white, one of the red, nearly all of the white and about an eighth of the red. Then I've kept completely all of the white and just a tiny slither of the red. And then for the final colour, I've gone even smaller than that, so it's a tiny, tiny little bit of red there. But you'd be amazed how much of a difference that adds on because, as I say, the red is such a strong pigment. Then going the other way, this one I've added just a small amount of the plum. Then I've got one of the red, almost half of the red, half of the plum, and then a little bit of black, because again, in the Fimo Soft, the black is a very strong, pig strong pigment. Then added a little less of the red, a little more of the black on this one. And then this time we've got one of this, half of the plum, half of the black. Then I swapped over one of the plum, half of the red, half of the black. Swapped again, whole one of the black, three quarters of the plum, and a little quarter of the red. If you're unsure about conditioning polymer clay, I do have a video with a few tips and techniques. I'll put a link to that in the video description below. But once you have got all your clays nicely conditioned, this is the way they turn out. So as you can see, particularly in these reds, even that tiny, tiny bit does actually give you quite a nice pink pigment. And then we've just got little bits of the yellow on the front. So I've rolled all of these into a, a nice round shape so that they will fit inside the extruder. And just to show you one, I will do... When you're doing the extruded clay, make sure your extruder is nice and clean to start with and then always start with the lightest colours and work up to the top. And what I will do, first thing to do is extend the back of the extruder so it's the right size. Open up the top. In the Lucy Clay one, you just push the barrel down. I'll just use the roller to do that. Just pop him in there. Now for a small amount like this, I don't even need to clamp this. And this is the difference to me between this one and the other one. With the makings, I say I was getting very sore hands and I was needing to clamp it. But with this one, all you need to do is get a piece of paper. I use to wear one of these little sheets here and just collect the extruded clay as it comes out. And it comes out relatively quickly and easily. When you get to the end, just turn the handle off one to release it. It makes it easier to unscrew the cap end. Then with a craft knife, 
I'll simply take off the end and then I'd unscrew and then repeat that as I went up each colour. I will keep my clay in the strings like this and then with touching it as little as possible I will then put this onto my sheet and I can get several colours going on the sheet and I'll do all of that, get all extruded and bring you back when I've got the sheet of clay done. So here are all of our colours extruded and I put them down so that they go in this sort of pattern so that when I'm working I can easily see which way and which colour I need to um, suddenly work with. The other clay we're going to need for today's session is a background colour and a base colour for the flower pendant. So the base colour I've chosen very much the cherry red and for the background colour I've chosen the darker, one of the darker shades, so the plum. This shouldn't show too much in the finished piece but I find it easier to have a border whilst I'm working somewhere where you can pull things out to and change the shape rather than try and work on the actual finished shape of the flower which will make sense in a minute. So for each of these I've got quite a large amount of clay, it's about three quarters of a pack so one and a half ounces or 42 grams and I've put them through on setting two of my pasta machines, so quite a thick setting on my machine setting naught is the thickest and setting nine is the thinnest and the background piece I have put on this piece of um, wax paper remember the working piece that we were going to use and this is what I will be working on throughout until we get to the end of the piece so I'm now going to get my two sheets and starting with the lightest colour I'm just going to pull off a little bit just break it gently with my fingers and just put a little bit of each of these colours onto these two sheets. So those are the sheets I'll be working from and obviously I'll just replenish from here as and when I need. So the next thing I need to do is just change my work um, surface and change my workstation because at the moment this is quite low and when I'm working I'm going to be working really high up here. So what I do is I have several of the A4 block boxes that I put all my canes in so I'm going to have three of those on either side and then a nice big tile on top so that I'll work on the tile but I'm working close up so I'm not bending over so I'm not hurting my back at all. So think about the position you work in when you're doing this because you don't want to spend several hours bent over in an uncomfortable position. So I'll get all that set up and then we'll start doing the actual piece. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trace around our template and cut it out on the red background. So very simply, with your craft knife, just go around. Then keeping the tracing paper the right way up, Put these pieces down on your background colour and do exactly the same. And this time, pull out the inner bit. And what you should find, hopefully, is that this bit, more or less, fits into that bit. Don't worry about having to jiggle it a bit. Try to make sure you don't trap any air underneath. And you can just push it where the two bits aren't quite meeting up. Because this is not going to be your finished shape, this is just a guide because we can change and add and do anything else we want to do at a later stage. But as I say, in, in actual fact, all of this background is going to be um, discarded at the end, so you can always use scrap clay as a colour if you would rather. I just find, because sometimes you see a little bit of it when we cut away from the outside, it's nice to use a colour that isn't going to be too alternate to how the rest of your finished piece looks. If you want to, you can take your roller, give it a bit of a roll over to just make sure it is nice and flat. But again, because we've got textures going in this, it really doesn't matter. Have a look on the underside, check there's no big air bubbles. 
and then we are ready to go. So I'm going to have mine facing this way up. So this is going to be the back of the pendant. I just think it looks nice with this piece going slightly up, but obviously you could do it any way you like. So that's the way I'm going to go. So I'm going to put this the right way up. So this is, this is actually that petal. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to very roughly, and I do mean roughly, draw in the shape of the petals. So on this one, see where it starts here? It goes down towards the middle. So I'm just going to very roughly put it in, going down towards the middle. This one overlaps and goes out that way with the one underneath it. So same thing. Turn the piece around because it's easier to see when you're facing upwards. Same sort of thing, this one goes out that way. This one overlaps again that way. And then last but not least, this one overlaps going down that side. Now, if when you've done it, you realize your bit isn't particularly central, so I was a bit high up there, so I'm gonna move that, just draw in a central bit there so I know roughly where the middle is. Of course, you can always completely rub this out roll it flat again and start again. So don't worry about it being particular and also don't worry about this shaping too much. What is important because the eye picks it up is if in nature one leaf overlaps like in that they all sort of fold in on top of each other, that's the bit to get right. Don't worry about the rest of it. So turn that one back up to where it is. So we're going to start with my one piece here and I'm going to concentrate a little bit on shading but not too much. It is fairly obvious on this bit on this one as you can see here we have got a shadow going all the way down here and there's another little bit of a shadow up the top here so because I do the shadows in a slightly different color scheme I'm going to take just draw myself a rough outline of where that shadow goes and I say it is just very very rough so just sort of there and just sort of there so when I start doing my work I'm going to ignore those two areas to start with and I work on one leaf at a time and work my way around so the next thing I'm going to do is pick out where these veins in the leaf are, they create dark shadows. So again, just very, very roughly putting them in. And this is where you can start to just almost ignore what the photo's like and just put things in as you think they would be. They all tend to radiate out, but you can just add them in. Sometimes they're just next to the tops. So they don't go all the way down to the bottom. Don't forget to put any on this side, even though we're going to ignore these two areas as yet, because you will have them coming down in there. And once you've done those rough lines, those are going to be the ones we're going to work on. Now, the other thing to bear in mind and to look at at this stage is to see which direction the shadow goes in. So the thing to do with the shading is to look where your um, line is and see which side is dark and which side is light. So on this one, you've got the line here and then the colours are actually darker to this side going to light. So you've got dark going to light, dark going to light, dark going to light. So I will start with my middle colour being the darkest one and then work towards the light. So this will be my cherry red and then I'll get lighter and lighter and lighter going in this direction. I will then repeat that all the way around. Because once I've done this one petal, then I, which I will fast forward a lot through anyway because you don't want to sit here and watch me just adding loads and loads of strands, you'll get the idea pretty quickly. I will then fast forward very quickly through all the other petals. I'm now going to put this off to one side because I'm not actually going to paint it. Now I've got these lines drawn in, I'm not going to pay much attention to this. And let's get started on doing our painting. I've put this masking tape on just to make sure I stay in shot because I have a terrible tendency to pull it towards me all the time. So hopefully that'll make sure I keep it in shot. And all I'm going to do, so I'll just pull these up. As I said, I'm going to start with my mid colour, colour so that's the cherry. So to start with, I'm not actually going to be using this sheet at all. To do most of the um, leaf, I'm just going to be using this selection of colours. So I, with the tip of my cocktail stick, and saying this is why I like the ones that are really sharp, I'm going to pull off a piece. And then with my fingers... I'm going to make it even smaller. So I'm just rolling. It doesn't matter when it breaks up into bits. Sometimes it stays and sometimes it doesn't. But by rolling it, A, you get it nice and thin, but also you get a nice meandering shape. It's not um, regimented, because of course this is the natural thing we're doing a flower, so you want this to be all lumpy in different shapes. The main shapes I'm using for this will be the long ones. Sometimes you might just want a little shape, so you'll just take a little piece off. And just roll a little blobby shape and sometimes we'll actually take off bits 
and roll it into a ball. So those are generally the sh three shapes I use when I'm doing my painting with clay. A long shape, a small one with sort of points at either ends and a round ball. We're not going to be using balls much, I'll put that off to one side. And all I'm going to do is pick it, and that's another reason why I like these, because it picks it up really easily. And I'm just going to lay this on roughly going in the direction where my stripes are. And then just work my way around. If I've got a short one, I will do just one of these short bits. Go back, pick yourself up another piece, and repeat. So I will now speed up, because that is the process of putting this one colour on, and I will stop again when I've got all of these strands in place for you. Okay, so there are all the red strands in place. Now, as you saw, I would sometimes cut it on here to make myself smaller bits. Where there's points that go over the top, you can just fold them back. You can also sort of chop it down on here to stop where you're needing to go. So my next colour, because we said the darkest bits went towards light this way. So now I move on to the next colour and do exactly the same. But lay them to this side. I'm not going to worry about being neat around the top because we can neaten that up right at the very end and you'll see what we do. But all of these pieces are just going to go on to this side or the ones I just added. Once you've finished the next colour, you just simply work out, done the next and the next and the next until you've done all six of your colours. You'll see as I get further down, some of them I add more than one strand if I've got quite a large amount left. And that is at times when I will look at my picture to see, for instance, there may be bigger areas here which are a certain colour. Um, but other than that, just generally work your way around. Still ignoring those two areas. It starts to taper off when it comes to this and that's how it should be. Generally there's less light going down towards the middle of the f of the flower so that's fine um, and just say just make it up as you go along. Don't feel as though you have to stick slavishly to this particular image.
Now you can see there I added quite a few extra bits down the middle because that was sort of like the mid colour as we go through our light tones. So as it's gone down here I added extra bits in so I'm not going to have too much light and most of the light bits are going to be left right towards the top. I also added a little bit extra here because where this is going to go towards the next door leaf we do want a little bit of darkness in there because this piece will be quite light again because it will be the bit that catches the light so this bit will be dark. So I'll just go back and add a couple of little of the, the darker reds in here when we get to that stage. But now we're on to the second lightest colour and we're nearly finished for that particular shading bit. So having added the little extra bits of dark on the side there and filled in all the rest, we've now just got the two dark areas to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in the same lines that we were using before. So wherever I had a dark line, put that in. And now we're going to go to our darker colours and we're just going to start two colours darker. So instead of starting the dark lines with this one, I'm going with this one, and then we're going to repeat so to that darker colour in and then work in that direction, go all the way up the shades until we finish with this one here. So exactly the same by starting from that um, couple of shades darker. So again, I'll fast forward through as we work through those colours. all the bits finished and all added in we're just going to add a tiny little bit around here because I left a bit here um, for doing the shadow and for that we're going to go for one of the darker colours one we haven't used yet so I've gone for this third on the shade of the darkest colours and we're just going to make a nice thin line and put it right around the edge of that leaf so that it looks like a shadow colour If by any chance you had been incredibly neat and tidy when you were doing yours and you had lovely, even extruded lines, you could, of course, just leave it like that. You might want to leave it like that, as it is. And there are some amazing polymer clay artists who work literally doing strings and lines of clay and, say, fantastic stuff. However, I like blending. So this is where we're going to start blending. And again, we're going to start using the cocktail stick. Now, the first thing we're going to do, although we've been doing all of this in the direction of the flower, we're going to go counterintuitive and we're actually going to go across to start with and the reason I do this is it just pulls the colours slightly across um, and gives a little bit more blending. It also makes sure they're nicely pressed down and in place on the backing thing so I'm sort of pushing down whilst at the same time pulling slightly. Now I'm not digging in too much 
just making sure I'm going across the tops of all of our clay there. As you can see it's just feathering it ever so slightly which will help when we do our direction in the right direction in just a second. And having done it one direction I'll quite often go around just do it a little bit going backwards and again at any point if you decide you want to stop and call that done then absolutely do that so now having done that just blend them slightly I'm now going to go down going in the right direction so just using not so much the tippy top point but sort of part way down I'm just going to pull down in the direction in which the veins in the leaf would run again having done it one way I'll then do it from the bottom going back out and then finally this is where the ball tool comes in I will just with the end of the ball tool just very gently go over and sort of roll and rub the clay to create nice sort of grooves in the finished piece to give us some nice texture And then last but not least, with the smaller end of the ball tool, I will just go around and push the clay into sort of a, a neater, rounded shape. Now again, you can start looking at your photo here if you like to, or you can simply start go by what you've done on the actual design. I've swapped over to the dark, the larger end of the ball tool again here. Because we're going to cut this piece away, I'm not at all worried about what that looks like on the underneath. And all I'm thinking about is the edge and the outline of our petal. And when you've done that, I will simply just very gently go over the outer edge just to make it nice and smooth. So there is our first petal done. And then we'll just carry on working our way around. As I said, I will do each one and look at the shadows and see which way the shadows go as each petal as I go around. Having done this next one, I will then bring you back because there's one other tip that I'll just show you as to what we do on the outside of this petal where they're overlapping each one. But other than that, it's basically a case of fast forwarding through from this point on. Turn the piece around. Turn the picture around. So I can see where the shading is and off we go again. First things first, pick out the dark spots. Okay, as you saw there, 
I'd forgotten to put the um, the extra dark bit around the underside of that leaf, so I simply went back and put it in. And that's the great thing about the polymer clay, of course. If there's any bit you don't like, you can just scrape it off, put another bit in, change it in any way. So I've done the, all the texture of both those leaves, but now I've got two leaves up and running. I can actually add a little bit of extra texture and extra depth. So I'm going to use the smaller end of the ball tool. And to start with, I'm just going to press down little bobbly bits just next to where that leaf is. Once I've pressed a few I can go back create like a, a channel of the darkness where the leaves overlap and just continue around a few bubbles and then a line a few bubbles and then a line and what you're creating is an extra groove so it just grooves a little bit of extra shaping between one leaf and the other if you get a bit where it's a bit um, light, you can always, of course, go back. Grab yourself an extra tiny bit of clay and just pop that in until you have a shape that you're happy with. And then, as before, with the larger one, just go and round off any edge on both sides. So you've got a nice bit of definition between the two leaves. When you're happy with both of those, then we're going to move on to leaf number three. And I say these ones I will really fast forward through and I'll bring you back for more chatting when we get to doing the middle bit, having done all five. So there we go, there's the main five petals of the flower done and as you saw I added an extra bit of dark in behind this one because having done the final petal I could then go back and do that. And it's up to you how much of the dark you add. I like adding quite a bit because it gives quite a nice three dimensional effect but obviously you don't have to do this, you can go a shade lighter and keep it as a lighter contrast as you go around. So we're not worried about the mess around the outside because we're going to cut all this bit away. Next thing we're going to do is the middle part and then finally that um, stamen in the middle. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just with the larger ball tool, just going over all the five petals just to make sure I'm very happy with how they all look and keeping some um, texture but also making sure there's no rough bits on them. Looking at the middle from our photo here, we're going to do very dark just in the middle because we're ignoring all of this bit to start with. We're going to do all of this background colour and then lay this on top. So I'm going to do a dark circle on the inside, then the next darkest colours five circles there and then the third darkest in five little circles around there. So we can do that quite simply by just taking a bit of the clay. So I'll start with the darkest and I'm going to start by doing that by rolling the clay up into a ball, putting it into the center and then just flattening it out. And I'll say we'll do five similar sized 
ones around the outside of the next darkest colour. And then go for the third darkest colour and these ones will sit in the front and then we'll just add any extra bits that aren't filled in with some of this darker colour that we used for doing the outline of the petals and then we'll fill it all in and then as before we'll just with our cocktail stick just start doing the motions down to spread it and feather it out so it fits into the petals and then as before just smooth down with the round ball tool to get our nice texture. Okay, with the centre done, and as you saw there, I just then pressed down quite hard into the middle so that it wasn't all raised up with the extra clay we'd done. We just need to figure out where to put the main stamen as it comes out of the flower. So in actual fact, it's not very long, so I'm going to do it from the middle up to about here. But if you look, it's actually only about here on the bloom. And we then see the five red bits or in this case they'll be sort of slightly more pink and then we've got the yellow around the outside so for this main bit all I'm going to do is put one level or one line of clay in so I'm just going to mark roughly just for my note where that's going to go so from the center up to about there and then I'm going to take some of our medium color red so the one we always started with when we were doing our petals but I'm not going to do it the whole way down in that colour because I'm going to shade it a little bit in towards the bottom. So with that, it's going to go to the top bit where I want it. But as I say, I'm not going right down towards the middle because I'm then going to go to the next um, shade of red, take off a very small piece. Add that on the bottom. And you can just gently, with your stick, smooth it in. Then for the next darkest colour, same thing again. Little dot. Put it underneath and smooth it in. And it's amazing how just doing that gives a sense of um, perspective and depth. So all I'm going to do then, very gently, just make it slightly longer and uh, wider as it goes to the bottom, smooth that out, there we go and now we're going to start moving on to the bits that stick out over the top. So the first bit we're going to do are the five rounds here and if you look carefully you'll see that there's a little bit of um, lighter shading around the outside so the easiest way of doing that is to create the colour you want for the lighter shading and I think we're going to go fairly pink on this one so I'm going to do the five rounds in that shade but I'm going to outline them in this really light shade. So we're going to do that by doing two sets of round balls. So the first one it's easier to do, figure out the size you want for the main bits first, see the size you've actually picked off or taken off your strips, roll it into a ball, yep I'm happy with that, that's about the right size. So that was like that. And then you're going to take slightly bigger pieces off your lighter one. And again, roll them up into balls. Then with the smaller end of your ball tool, pick up the dots, the lighter ones, and put them around the tip of the anther. And then with a slightly dark, deeper end, you're just going to create sort of like little indents so that when you get the darker shades and stick them inside, it'll make them look as though they've got a, a light around the outside.
Okay, so that's the five main bits done. When you've got the bits coming off the hibiscus, and it's easier to show you on the real thing, can you see here the tiny, tiny little lines that the yellow bits are stuck to? We're going to do those. They're usually sort of slightly lighter than the bit that goes up. And we're just going to add a couple of little ones of these at the bottom edge, just to give the idea that that's what you see. So I'm going one shade lighter than the stem and we are going to want to roll and roll until we get tiny, tiny pieces. And this is something that just takes a bit of time and patience. So you can see there I've actually got a bit on the end, so as soon as you get little bits that look as though they're the right size, just take them off and just have them coming from the main bit, going upwards. You don't need a huge amount, probably just sort of four or five of these, just to give the eye the idea that that is what is happening. And just keep rolling. If it sticks to your finger, pull off. Sometimes the whole thing sticks to your finger, in which case just use the cocktail stick to gently go under your finger and under where it is, and it should lift off fine. Okay, so not too many, just enough, let's say, to give the idea. And I'm just going to blend those in slightly just by pulling down. And now for the final pieces. So let's get some of the, the two yellows. And all we're going to do for this is take tiny pieces of these, um, roll them into balls and then dot them all the way around to give like a corona around those five pieces there. I will normally do ten of one colour, ten of the other, 10 of another colour, 10 of the other. So we end up with 40 pieces in all, but I alternate them because that way you end up with a slightly more um, varied amount as you put them on. And again, either put them on with a cocktail stick or with the small end of the ball tool, whichever you prefer. So I'll get on and do that. Um, speed up as I'm doing it, because obviously you don't want to watch me doing all 40. And um, show you how it looks when we've got that bit done. So they're really quite small, these pieces. As you can see, I haven't kept them even, those all sort of bits, in the same way as they weren't even around the actual picture. But the final thing, just to give them a bit of texture, just with a very fine point of the um, cocktail stick, just tiny little dots all over the tops of those rounds. And there we go, our piece is finished and ready to cut out to be made into a pendant. So the next thing to do is just to cut it out and here is where you can really go in and emphasize all those lovely curves we got around the outside. Now I'm going to go in at an angle so I'm not cutting straight, I'm going to go in at an angle so that the top pattern will show but anywhere we've got this dark color underneath will actually be underneath so it's not going to show when we do our piece. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do little lines out before I even start so that when we pull the clay away it's going to come off nice and easily and not distort or pull any of the shape we've left behind. And then it's, as I say, simply a case of going in at an angle and cutting down to the paper to create the out shape, outside shape of your pendant. What I'm going to go back do is anywhere I've got a little bit of that purple showing, I'm just going to go back, shave a piece a bit more off until I've got a nice tidy bit on the outside where I don't have the purple showing. Once you've tidied your piece up, it should remove very easily from the backing. And then it's just a case of deciding what you want to do with it. So I'm going to make it into a pendant, so I'm going to put a little bit of um, 
just a, a bale on the back, a very, very simple one. But if you just wanted it as a card topping or something for a journal cover, then obviously you could just bake it completely flat on your tile. But I am going to give it a bit of shaping. And on for do that, I've just taken a strip of card. And with my roller, I've just literally used the roller to do a nice sort of backwards and forwards concertina just to give us very slight roll shape. And what will that, that will then do is when I sit my piece in, It'll just give me a little bit of shaping when I put it down on the tile. But before we do that, I decide which piece is up. I'm going to take a little bit of the colour that we did right at the very start, which is the same as this one, which is the bit of our insert that we pulled out. Just create a little round. I'm going to put a cocktail stick, twist it and put it all the way through. I'm doing that at this stage because I can make sure I've got not too thick a piece. And cut off the bit I don't want. Give me a flatter bale. I'm going to sort of wiggle that around a bit because I want quite a nice big hole. And whilst that cocktail stick is still in place, gently turn him over. Now I could just place this on as is, but I was going to do a slight dab of liquid clay just to do get even more of a good fit and then he just pops on there and if you want to just very very gently with your ball tool press down around the outside just to smooth that clay in place make sure the cocktail stick is going across the right direction and then of course when you turn it back make sure you haven't flattened out any of your texture so just go back in check which way the cocktail stick is you should even be able to hold it up slightly just to double check that it's hanging okay get your tile put the card down rest that piece where you want it to be if you want any more support to create even more shape in your petals or anything else just add some extra bits of card around once you're happy I will tent the whole piece in aluminium foil to protect the clay should the oven spike during baking and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. So I'll get that one done and I'll bring you back when it's finished. So there we go, there's our finished piece and I've just to say strung a little bit of the Boona cord through on the back to make it into a pendant. So here's the one we did with all the extruded clay for that one. And then I also did one starting with Indian Red as the main colour and this time instead of adding white I added yellow so I went for the sunflower yellow and added the little bits of yellow all the way through to give us these nice orange tones and again started with the red as the main one and that ended up with this one. So exactly the same but with slightly different colour variations. So there we go, there are your finished pieces and the project's all done. I hope you enjoyed that. It was just a little taster of how I do my painting with polymer clay. And of course, if you like the technique, you can just go on and build up and create as many works as you want to. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I'm off to start another painting. I think it'll be a landscape one this time. So I'll have a bit of fun with that. If you want to see what I do, I'll be posting details of it on my Facebook and Instagram pages. And of course, I'll be back to do another tutorial of some description in the near future. I think that's it for now. Hopefully see you next time. Bye.